everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video. I trust and hope that you have been enjoying your morning thus far. And we're going to be talking about 94L, so the trend of it making its way into the Caribbean continues with most of the operational models. And even looking at the National Hurricane Center's graphic, at the end of it, we're not seeing that turn up to the north. So the system has a pretty good shot at entering the Caribbean, and I will be showing you guys why in this video. And right there, we can see post-tropical cyclone sean there is that circle with that x in the middle so it is a post-tropical cyclone and should dissipate into an open trough by tonight so let's go ahead and talk about these systems moving on to the satellite imagery here we can see so there's a front out there we can see all those thunderstorms across parts of the bahamas uh, which is uh, those white dots you see those are lightning strikes so that indicates that there is some thunderstorm activity within those areas in and around the vicinity of the caribbean uh, especially going into parts of Central and Northern South America, there is some activity there as well. But for most islands across the region, there isn't anything too crazy happening. Out in the main development region there, we see uh, 94L, all that activity associated with it. Sean's uh, remnants as well. And so let's go ahead and zoom into the Caribbean for a moment before talking more about or disturbance and briefly for Sean. So going into the Caribbean here, we can see again all those thunderstorms across some spots in the Bahamas. And uh, notice that all those clouds moving down. So that's behind that frontal boundary. So uh, that's some cool, dry air. So that's bringing some cooler temperatures to some areas such as Florida. And then as we head over into Central America, there we see all that convection. So some thunderstorms activity popping up across some areas especially over in, uh, near the pacific coast of some of those territories as well looking down into colombia and venezuela there we can see lots of thunderstorms down in that region across especially northern colombia but as we head to the Alps, as i said there isn't anything much happening however as we're going to be heading through today there's going to be a chance of some brief thunderstorms or showers moving through for some areas so let's go on to that rainfall forecast from euro now, when we see this map becoming more colorful with these shades of reds and oranges, and even those purples, we can see some spots of purples that is indicating a lot of heavy rainfall. So there may be instances or uh, some cases of flooding across some areas in Central America as a result of all the expected heavy rains, even across parts of Northern South America as well. Colombia, we already see that there's that big blob out there and uh, sections of Venezuela as well. Even across parts of the Guyanas, there could be some thunderstorms popping up here and there maybe some brief periods of heavy rainfall as well now as we head into the Alps, going to the abc Alps, trinidad tobago barbados through to the rest of the lesser antilles grenada all the way up through to anguilla there might not be a whole lot for everyone but there may be periods of some thunderstorms or even some heavy downpours or just a passing shower at the most so the rainfall chance isn't very high but there is a chance of seeing some activity as we head through today go into puerto rico and the virgin islands same story there uh, even for some spots in Hispaniola there may be some heavy downpours at times even across some sections of Jamaica going to the Cayman Islands Cuba and as we saw for the Bahamas there's already some activity there contributing to that rainfall total for the day and so that is what is expected across the region guys there isn't anything too major happening however that could change this weekend with 94L potentially approaching or making its way into the eastern Caribbean so let's go ahead and now take a look at the system in more depth so as we look at the seven-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we can see here that this formation chance has decreased some more. So in the update last evening, the 8 p.m. update, it was down to 70% and it has been maintaining that up to the 2 a.m. update this morning. So we can see that the formation chance is at 70% for the system. And as I said, notice that at the end of this shaded area, it's not showing a turn up to the north, but showing more of a continuous continuous west-northwest track of the system and uh, most of the operational models are now agreeing that the system is going to be making its way into the Caribbean bringing some impacts along with it. It could potentially be a tropical cycle regardless if it is producing enough activity even to be designated as a potential tropical cyclone it will be bringing some dangerous impacts and I want to get into those in a moment but first let's quickly look at some uh, of the general model data here. So going to the track guidance, we can see that some of these tracks are actually taking the system a lot closer to the Caribbean. So, for example, looking at yesterday's uh, expectations, we can see that they were showing that turn a bit sooner and expecting the system to remain out for the most part. But for today, 
take a look at this. We have some of these even entering the Caribbean already. So there's a pretty decent chance that the system is going to be entering the Northeastern Caribbean. As for intensity, they are backing off on a hurricane. So most models are expecting that, hey, this will become a tropical storm and may make it to hurricane status. Not a guarantee. I mean, 94L is struggling right now. And by the way, through the next two days, the formation chances actually decreased as well. Let's quickly go back to that. So for the next two days, down to 20%. So it dropped from 70 to 60 to 40% and now down to 20%. So it is unlikely that we'll see something develop in the short term. So maybe by the latter part of this week, it will try to make it to tropical depression or tropical storm status. Again, that formation has been delayed. And with the system remaining pretty weak, it will trend more towards the west. So uh, we'll see what it will decide to do, but it is certainly not looking too good on satellite. Here we have it. So it is producing a bit more thunderstorm activity compared to last evening, but at the same time, it is still a struggling system out there. Let's see how it evolves through today. And by the way, those are the remnants of Sean. So Sean should become uh, an open trough by later tonight. This was the last advisory issued last night at 11 p.m. We can see that at the time, maximum sustained winds were around 30 miles per hour with the system moving to the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour so it should continue west whatever is left of it should continue to the west over the next uh, several days and so let's head back to the main talk of this video 94l so we're now heading on to some model data we're going to be looking at what the gfs euro icon and canadian models have to show for the system and we're kickstarting things looking at euro so this is as we head out to friday the 20th of the month now all these greens you're seeing these colors represent the precipitation rate those black lines they're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure so that red l is representative of that low pressure associated with the system notice that we're not seeing those isobars being in that circular manner and we're not seeing much of them this is suggesting that the system will not be a tropical cyclone or will try to be a tropical cyclone at the time uh, as we head into friday of this week the 20th of the month maybe a tropical depression here who knows but overall euro has all that activity spreading across eastern islands the lesser antilles going up to the virgin islands as well next as we head to the canadian model here this is as we head into friday so again uh, by the end of this week that would be the time of impacts in the eastern caribbean now canadian model has been very consistent with that tropical storm intensity expected as the system is going to be making its way in so there we see a pressure of a thousand five millibars not a very organized system there but maybe a tropical depression or tropical storm as we head into saturday we're seeing all this activity spreading across uh, parts of the leeward islands headed to the virgin islands as the system strengthens and makes its way out. So Canadian model, Euro expecting that it will move in. How about Icon? This is as we uh, this is as we head into Thursday, the 19th of the month, Thursday of this week. Again, not seeing a strong system out there. A weak system uh, is there and a weaker system tends to travel more to the west. As we head into Friday, there we can see all that activity associated with it, mostly on the eastern side. Let's head further out here. As we head into Saturday, there we can see all that activity spreading across the Lesser Antilles, uh, even some heavier rain for some areas. So that is going to be a possibility or a likelihood rather if the system should make that track into the Caribbean. And then eventually, let's go on to the final run of the day, GFS. So, well, not the day because I will be making an evening update, but for now, GFS. So we're heading on to Saturday, the 21st of the month. So GFS, unlike other models, is expecting that the system will try to strengthen quickly into a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane and move out. So GFS is the only of the four models which is showing that the system will be strengthening out there and making its way out. And at this point with how the disturbance has been progressing, I do not think that is the most likely scenario because as we can see, other models are showing that it will try to get itself together. It may develop in the long run, but as, of, uh, as for imminent formation, that seems quite unlikely. So I'm not expecting that the system is going to be quickly developed out there, I think that we will see more of a scenario of it making that very close approach to the Caribbean. We're even seeing on the model guidance, as I showed you guys, where the system is expected to make a closer Caribbean approach. Maybe not as something very strong, but even with 
all that shower and thunderstorm activity. We know that it takes less than a tropical storm or tropical depression to bring dangerous conditions because this would have the potential to unleash a lot of heavy rainfall, which may trigger flooding and mudslides. And that is the main concern. We're not talking about something very strong. So the wind is not the big concern here. It's going to be the water. And I know this might be helpful, especially in areas experiencing severe drought. But at the same time, there could be dangerous impacts. This could do more harm than good. So if you're in the, uh, the Lesser Antilles, especially the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, maybe even Puerto Rico, you want to keep watch for the next couple of days. Again, no guarantee of this happening, but it seems as though it is the likely scenario with the system. So we'll continue to keep you guys posted. Of course, I'll let you know if there are any changes or any major changes with the system as it relates to what is expected. And of course, stay tuned for my next updates coming this evening. So that is it for now. That is it for this update. I hope you found it to be quite informative, but if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I can. And remember to always be with the wise.